Hello everyone, I am International Master Min Lee, also known as Wonderful Time on Chess.com. Welcome to the second video series of mine on YouTube. If you haven't heard, so I made my first video series on YouTube as a speedrun attempt to 3000 on Chess.com. This second series will be about my own game analysis. In this series, I will try my best to cover games played by me which I think are the most interesting, even if I lose, by showing the moves followed by a detailed analysis. By the end of the video, you should be able to tell what the ideas are employed in and every move and how I feel about certain positions in the games. The first game I'm going to cover in this series is the game I play against Russian Super GM Sergei Karyakin in the title Tuesday this week. Both of us play this event frequently, and luckily for me, and also a big honor for me, that I got a chance to play against him in the ninth round of the event. We both had 7 of its boy before facing each other, and this was a very crucial match for us. So without further ado, let's start the analysis. Okay, so in the game I play d4 first. d4. He play knight to f6. There are a lot of lines here in this position, but in the game, I choose a London variation, because it was implied a lot of time by Mark Cranston, and of course it is very very solid lines to play. Before the game happening, I even thinking about okay, I can even try and get a draw here. And then, let me try to fight in the final round. Knight f3, d5, you play in the game. Bishop f4. Okay, so this is the normal London steps. c5, c3, queen b6, play by him. Queen b6. He's trying to attack in the b2 pawn here. You can see this. So I defend a pawn with queen c2, queen c2 here. Knight c6, he play in the game. A thing here you should know here, a thing that you should know here is that if you play bishop f5 right now, it's gonna be backfire, because simply white can take the bishops. There are nothing like queen b2 here because of queen c8, which is gonna be made right away. So if you want to carry out this plan, you need to play knight c6 first. So play e3. He played with f5 in the game, which is kind of a mistake, according to me. Here are the moves that I made the most, and I think which is the strongest one is g6. Planning to play with f5 when it is protected, and then trying to play with g7 and castling on the king side. In the game, he played bishop f5, and then here there is, a, I think, a good play for me after attacking c5 like this. So right now he is forced to take on c2 because he cannot take back with the queen here because that his bishop gonna be taken easily by the queen here. So bishop c2 in the game, I take the queen, I take back, and now knight a3 I play, knight a3. A very annoying moves because right now I not only threatening to take this bishop, I do even plan by something like knight b5, then knight c7 with a deadly fork. He played bishop e4 here, and I play knight b5 as a planner, and now here comes knight c7. In the game, Karyakin Fanters with Castling on the queen side. Normally, the move should be played here is rook c8. But even after this, if I play something like bishop e2 and then slowly castling and then get the rook out, I got a decent position and I think a solid advantage. But in game, he play castling here, so I get a chance to grab his pawn by playing bishop c7. And I grab a pawn here. Rook e8. 
Actually, I should not be hesitant to take the pawn here. I can play another moves as well. But I see the pawn and I think that there is nothing wrong with taking this. Okay, let's take and see what happens. Should be six. 97 if I play. And here you can see that if I play bishop d4, so e5 is gonna be very bad for me. So I can play bishop c7 back. And now I am up a solid pawn here. And my next plan is going to bishop g3 and then slowly improve with my pieces. I can even plan play a4, a5 trying to create an assault in the queen side. He play e6. Oh no, he play e5 actually. I'm sorry. e5. Bishop d6 I play in the game. And now it is attempt by me trying to exchange the bishops. I feel that the bishop on c7 is pretty weak, so a chain for this bishop makes sense. And obviously he cannot take back with the bishops because they're gonna be the fork like this and now take the exchange with a winning position. He played f6 in the game, f6. Rook d1. Simply trying to develop the rooks and thinking about attacking this pawn in the near future. Rook e6. This move means that he wants to force exchange and then he may want to build some kind of card of play in the center. Takes. Takes. Knight d2. Trying to kick this annoying bishop away from the center. Bishop c2. Which is the best move. If he don't play this before he come back. So this pawn is going to be taken easily by knight b3. So he played this first, rook c1, and he come by the bishops. Knight b3, simply trying to develop my pieces. And this pawn is gonna be a big issue for him, and he need to watch it out. King b8, bishop e2, slowly developing. Knight b6. If we are not so careful, so his plan here is to play knight a4, trying to attack him back with b2 pawn, which is not so easy to defend because the bishop controlling this diagonal and the rook cannot come to b1 or c2 to support the b2 pawn. So the move first here to play is knight c5, protecting the a4 and attacking this rook at the same time, rook e7. Castles. D4. Actually, this might not be a good move, but it can easily be understand that he want to create some kind of color play, and now he hurries to create that, because if he do if he doesn't doing anything, so I will simply play a4, b4, and a5, and creating and winning attack on the queen side. D4 he play in the game. There is a pin on the e-file that makes me cannot take the pawn for free, so I decide to play rook fd1, trying to get the d-file and attacking the pawn at the same time. This an e3, I takes. Bishop f7, trying to attacking this pawn on b2 on a2 I mean. C4. I defend a pawn, and at the same time, I do plan to place in something like C5 in the near future, trying to push up my pawns, because you can simply see that I am three pawn against one pawn only on the queen side, and according to this vast majority of pawns, so my play is gonna be about in the queen side here. F5. B3. Decide to take it slow and okay, just play slowly, trying to improve my position slowly but surely and wait for him to take action. E4. His plan here is to play knight to e5, trying to generate some card of play, or even maybe something like g5 f4. There are a lot of plans here, 
maybe including something like drop d6 trying to get d file or maybe knight d6 trying to attacking this and this at the same time but in the game I choose another plan I want to open another file for my rooks and trying to attack even in the king side rook f1 I play in the game actually this is a bad move this is a bad move because here he had very important resource with rook e5 which forced me to go with knight e4 and now my pawn is gonna be scattered which is obviously not so good for me so but in the game i think we are down in time a bit so he cannot see this and he played g6 simply trying to protect this pawn here rook cd1 now another rook get into place and now i am in total control of the game knight e5 rook d6 okay time for me to invade my rook okay i can even play rook f6 here before playing g4 knight bd7 he want to exchange my annoying knight I'm, and i'm glad to take takes takes i play g4 in a game which is not a good idea i believe here i think simply is rook fd1 giving me winning position because he cannot run his knight simply if he runs it's gonna be mid on d8 here and here so it forks something like king c8 trying to defend both d8 and d7 squares but i can simply play a4 a5 and a6 which simply will get me in the game but i play g4 which is not a bad move at all trying to open up the f file and get very decent position just in g4 actually once again fd1 wins here and right now it is even stronger because i can combine with bishop g4 attacking this knight and now ref d1 simply got me the got me the game but in the game i play should test g4 simply knight to e5 and come back simply rook g8 so now it can be seen that his idea was play g5 g4 and then knight f3 but i am the one who comes first rook d6 my plan is trying to play 96 sometime and rook f8 trying to invade in the f in the final rank g5 9d6 bishop g6 s3 actually we would we are both down time i think we both have something around 20 seconds here so i want to play safe and play s3 i just prevent g4 h5 c5 right now and now my opponent blunders with g4 i text text and right now i got a win here with rook to f8 which is the game continuation forcing him to text back with the rook and i text here now his king his king need to run here and there are two squares for king which is a7 and c7 but if he goes for king a7 so this rock gonna decide again here and here and i win a rook and the game obviously in the game he played king c7 so in the game i just think that okay now i want to play rook c8 but he got king d7 and his king gonna escape through e6 so I play bishop b5, trying to guard the d7 square, and now rook c8 gonna come very strong, very strong. And here, Karakin can resign the game. I think a little bit early, he can continue with knight c6, trying to block this diagonal. But obviously, I can continue with something like king g2, king g3, or even a3 before or something. My opponent is completely tied up. That makes me can do a lot of things in this position. But in game he resign here. And gives me a very important win. That gives me a slot in the podium. In the top 8 
in this week, Thursday, Tuesday. So that is everything about the game, and I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks and peace.